Hey, it's that movie that was the result of literally the entire internet cyberbullying a movie studio. Was it worth it? Let's find out. Sonic the Hedgehog stars Ben Schwartz as the voice of Sonic, an extraterrestrial who can run at high speeds and has been hiding out on Earth for the last 10 years. When he causes a power outage, the government sends the madman Dr. Robotnik, played by Jim Carrey, after Sonic to capture him and determine the source of his powers. So Sonic teams up with a local sheriff, played by James Marston, and the two go on the run to get him off the planet and away from Robotnik's clutches. I think even if you only occasionally peruse the depths of the internet these days, You'd have heard the story by now, but if for some reason you didn't, this was going to be released in 2019, and then the first trailer dropped, and we got whatever this thing was. And everyone lost their minds. I mean, the internet had a total meltdown. Last year was when we got Cats, the Will Smith CGI Genie, and the Shot for Shot live action, but not really live action Lion King remake, and this was what crossed the line. Not that those other things didn't get people angry, but yeah. You can get away with making a soulless remake of The Lion King, but God forbid you mess with Sonic, right? So yeah, the people behind this movie took everyone's complaints into serious consideration, and they pushed the release date back three months so they can totally redesign the character and make Sonic look closer to his original design. And I'm kind of on the fence on what precedent this may have set. I mean, obviously you want to listen to what the fans have to say, but do you always want the artist strictly controlled by the audiences? Like, reshoots after a bad test screening have always been a thing. There's always been stuff tacked on afterwards. But to essentially redo an entire movie, or at least an essential part of the movie, because the audiences didn't agree with the artist? I don't know, I feel like I can do a whole other video on this. We'll see. But at any rate, yeah, in this particular case, I did agree with what audiences had to say, and I do applaud the studio for taking the time to redo Sonic's design. All the animators who probably put in an insane amount of overtime and prevented this movie from even getting further delayed, they probably don't get enough credit for this. Because, yeah, I don't know how I'd feel if they stuck with the original design on this one. I mean... I'm not a Sonic fanatic, but I have played the games a lot growing up on Sega Genesis, and he was at least some part of my childhood, like he was for a lot of other people who are going to see this movie. So yeah, it was nice to see a movie where they got him right, especially since we really haven't gotten any good video game movies. I mean, other than Detective Pikachu, I guess. So yeah, video game movies really needed another win. So was the wait worth it? Yeah, I'd say so. Let's discuss. Right off the bat, the thing that everyone was concerned about the most, how was Sonic himself? Well, pretty great actually. Ben Schwartz nails it. I've been a fan of this guy since he was on Parks and Rec, and he captures that zany, fast-talking persona that Sonic is known for, similar to how he was portrayed in the old TV shows. A lot of this movie is Sonic either breaking the fourth wall, narrating, or just talking to himself. There is a scene where he's playing baseball by himself, and he's announcing every move that he makes, or he's in his little home, and he's announcing everything that he does, like he's exercising or reading comics. In nearly any other movie, this would definitely get a little aggravating, but here it works, and that's not to say that every joke he makes hits its mark. In film, though, the rule has always been show, don't tell, and this movie breaks that rule. A lot, actually. But for good reason, because it's part of Sonic's arc, which is that he's lonely. He's living on Earth, by himself, for 10 years, and isn't allowed to reveal his identity, and this is essentially his coping mechanism, so this is the way that we're able to get inside his mind and figure out what he's thinking. And this is something that I feel goes a little underappreciated here. I like how this movie takes things that you're not supposed to do in movies and subverts them to give us a compelling arc. Yeah, that's something I never thought I'd say for a movie like this, but Sonic's characterization is actually very good here. And obviously that's important. You need a likable protagonist with needs that are relatable, in this case that Sonic wants friends, Otherwise, you lose the audience's interest. And in this case, they do a really solid job overall. And the way in which they incorporate James Marston into the action, I think they did a much better job with this than they have with these other CGI live-action hybrids that 
team up a human character with an animated character. Normally, the human character is kind of shoehorned in and all they do is fall on their faces due to the wacky hijinks of the main animated character. But here, Sonic treats him as an equal and doesn't try getting on his nerves every two seconds. In fact, I'd say Sonic trying to build a friendship with this guy was one of the sweeter aspects of this movie. I also want to talk about the redesign for a minute because it really made a difference here. The whole idea behind the original design, I guess, was for a more realistic looking Sonic. But the funny thing is, this movie is anything but realistic and grounded. This movie is very colorful and off the wall. There are a lot of elaborate landscapes, a lot of explosions happening, a lot of scenes filled with CGI that's just bouncing around all over the place. If you went for a real realistic Sonic, it really would not match the energy of the rest of the movie. And when it comes to making animated characters look realistic, it doesn't really work in general. Part of the charm is their really animated facial expressions. I mean, look at The Lion King last year and what everyone had to say. They looked so realistic that they had no emotion, really. Or even look at Christopher Robin a couple years ago and that realistic looking Winnie the Pooh. A lot of these characters who we've grown to love over the years are less charming and are either lifeless or creepy or both. Anyway, let's talk about Jim Carrey. I mean, my god. Even when that original trailer dropped and we had Sonic's first design, I was thinking, no matter how the rest of this movie is going to be, even if it's going to be otherwise terrible, Jim Carrey is going to be great. And I'm very happy to say I was right. For anyone who grew up on his earlier work like Dumb and Dumber, The Mask, Ace Ventura, this is a return to that style of humor for him. He's very loud, making exaggerated facial expressions, he's getting in everyone's faces, he's talking over people. The government somehow gives the guy the highest authority to track down Sonic and anytime someone argues with him, he'll just shut them up and tell them that they're wrong. Honestly, despite all the CGI, Jim Carrey might actually be the most animated character here. He doesn't sit still for a minute. His manner of speaking and the way he carried himself in general just reminded me of an evil Ace Ventura. And you would think something like this would get old after a while, but his comedic timing is so on point and he's constantly changing up what he does that the shtick never gets old and he's always hilarious. If there's one thing I got out of this movie, more than anything, it's that when it comes to physical humor, Jim Carrey still got it and I'm very happy about that. I mentioned earlier that the friendship between Sonic and James Marston was one of the sweeter aspects of the film. But beyond that, there really isn't much else to James Marston's character. In fact, I'd say he's otherwise pretty bland. He has this arc where he's trying to get out of town and get a new job, and that's okay, I guess. And James Marston is fine with the material he's given. But beyond that, there's really nothing else to him. He and the majority of the other human characters are really just generic stock characters. Like, James Marston is the nicest guy in this movie, and his wife supports him through literally everything that he does. So, beyond that, there's really nothing else to their characters. And even all the side characters are just there for jokes that are just not funny in very one note. Like, you have the sister-in-law who hates him for literally no reason. And you also have the incompetent deputy who has to call him for every little move that he makes. There's also the crazy old man character who's gotten glimpses of Sonic and no one believes him and that's a joke. None of the jokes with these characters really are funny and they're all kind of just... there. Which, in a way, is understandable, even though a lot of this movie's audience are going to be people who grew up with Sonic in the 90s, this is still, at the end of the day, also written for kids. So some things are only going to be so complex. I've said this before, who these movies are written for is something to just keep in mind, and you're going to have to just roll with it. That being said, when movies do go down this route, I just wish the characters were, you know, funnier. There are also a few storylines that either get resolved too easily or just don't get mentioned ever again. There are characters from Sonic's past who are an important part as to why Sonic is even on Earth, and after the first scene, they're neither seen nor mentioned again. Plus, it's these government officials who bring Robotnik in and are originally working with him, and they even go so far as to label James Marston as a global terrorist, and his face is plastered all over the news. Yet, yeah, not too long after they bring it up, they just drop it, and James Marston is somehow able to just get around and do whatever he wants with no issue. And the resolution to all that is so simplistic that it is treated as a joke, but honestly, that's just a big thing to just toss to the side like that. By the end, the movie really just turns into Sonic vs. Robotnik, which is kind of what we wanted anyway, but my thing is, why even waste our time bringing up these other side plots if you're not even going to resolve them?
I was nervous about this one, to be honest. I was looking forward to it either way, but I was nervous. I was afraid that the behind-the-scenes drama would be bigger than the movie itself. Though I'm happy to say that it turned out to be enjoyable. This mainly relies on the talents of both Jim Carrey and Ben Schwartz, whose performances are better than a lot of the movie's writing. But they're both so strong that they really carry this movie. It's fun, it's fast-paced, and it's hilarious. It's just an overall good time. Sonic the Hedgehog gets a 7.5 out of 10. I'd say this is just a little better than Detective Pikachu since these two movies get lumped in a lot and it's honestly the best video game adaptation we've gotten so far although that's not saying much. But hopefully these video game movies will start improving moving forward because they can be a lot of fun. Like imagine a really well made Super Mario Brothers movie or even if we got a Donkey Kong Country movie that would be a lot of fun. But let me know, did you see Sonic the Hedgehog or are you planning to see it and what were your thoughts? Did it live up to the hype for you or did you find it disappointing? And what would be the next video game movie you'd like to see? Let me know in the comments below and as always if you like what you see please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you next time.